Hello and welcome to the Chalk Curriculum Tutorial on Unit Template Creation. This video will provide a step-by-step -step guide for how you can bring your curriculum to life by establishing a meaningful unit template and use it in the creation of your institution's curriculum maps. Here's a brief outline of what we'll be covering in this video. We'll start with a terminology overview to make sure we're all on the same page. We'll then walk through some of the best practices that we've established for creating your unit template within Chalk. From there, we'll take a look at the actual tools you'll be using to do this within Chalk, and then we'll go through a specific example following those best practices and leveraging what we've learned about the unit template editor in Chalk. The first term that we'd like to go over is a unit of instruction. Now, a curriculum map will consist of various units of instruction, each of which will have a suggested timeline, will be focused on one key area, and will contain various resources that support teaching that focus area. These resources can vary widely and can be customized entirely by you. Each of these resources can take the shape of identified skills to be learned, learning activities to help teach those skills, as well as a check for understanding, which might take the shape of an assessment, whether it's formative or summative, or any other methodology you might use to check for understanding. Now, the next term we want to go over is a unit template. These unit templates will provide structure to each of your units of instruction. This will be consistent within a curriculum map, so it's quick and easy to find the resources you need in instructing that unit. Each of these unit templates will consist of various fields, and those fields will help you structure all those resources we were talking about earlier. And this is very much the piece that we want to make sure you have full control over when you're getting up and running within Chalk. Before we dive into those various fields and the things you can do with them, let's take a look at some of the best practices that we've established in creating your first unit template for your institution. It can be very helpful to identify a curriculum task force that will be responsible for establishing your unit template. Having a good representation of your unique institution will help your mapping project in two major ways. First, agreeing on common language that everyone in the task force understands will make sure the true intent of the maps is widely understood. Second, this will go a long way to increasing adoption of your mapping process across the institution. A sample task force may include an educator representative for each of early learning, elementary, middle, and high school, as well as a building leader and an administrator. It's important to note that this should be an iterative process. You want to find a balance between having enough structure to guide the creation of your units, while also making sure it's not overly complicated and is easy for everyone to understand how they should be used. To this end, it's best to put a first draft together, try it out with their unit or two, and really get a sense of whether it's accomplishing what you wanted to or what tweaks you want to make to it to get there. Through this process, you're working to establish a consensus across your task force and be able to answer questions such as, do we need another template or is one enough? Or what is important non-negotiable information we should be including when people create assessments within their curriculum maps? Now that we have an understanding of best practices, let's take a look at how to use the unit template editor in Chalk. To get started on creating your unit template, you want to navigate to curriculum either from your main dashboard by clicking curriculum here or from the top menu where it says curriculum. From here, you'll be able to see all the curriculum maps that currently exist in your institution. You should also see the templates option on the left hand side of your screen here. If you're not seeing this option, please make sure to reach out to your administrator so they can change the permissions on your chalk account. Once you've selected templates, the first thing you'll see is a card for each of the templates that currently exists in your institution. You'll also see a handy learning guide on the right hand side here, where you'll be able to tell what a curriculum map is, how to select a template, as well as what you'll want to do if you want to add more templates, which is what we're going to walk through right now. The first thing we'll do is click the plus custom template button shown in the card view here. From our new unit template, we'll want to start by changing the title in the top left corner here. Once we've updated the title of our template, right below this we can see our unit outline. Within our outline, we'll be able to see how many fields there are in our current unit template, as well as each of them by their title in the list below. 
Right now we're seeing we only have two fields, and if we wanted to reorder them, we could click the three lines on the left here and drag up or down. As soon as we make this change in the list on the left here, we'll be able to see how the center of our screen updates automatically. It's important to note as you're making updates to our unit template, the changes will save automatically as we're making them. Within our unit template, there are two specific types of field that we can use. The first one is our standards field here. Within our standards field, we have the option to adjust the title to reflect what we want it to. And then this will give us the option, once we're creating our maps, to assign specific standards to a unit, which we can access from Chalk's database of standards. It's important to note with our standards field that we won't be typing any information in. We'll simply be selecting from a pre-selected set of standards that have been added to the map. We'll see more details on this when we get into our example later. The other option we have with our standards field is to allow for standards to be broken out into learning targets. What you'll notice when I turn this checkbox on is we'll add a column to our standards field. This is where we'll be able to create learning targets that are directly associated to standards that have been added to our unit. This is completely optional, and unless you have a specific use of learning targets, for now we recommend not including them. You can always add this later, and if you'd like to learn more about how we use learning targets in Chalk, you can access our Help Center in the top right corner and search for learning targets. The last thing we can do from our standards field is add a field description. The field description down below here serves as help text to go along with the field. This is a perfect place to put any information that you'd like to share with people writing curriculum in your institution. You can include videos, help articles, or links to external resources so that they have all the context they need to create their maps. One thing to keep in mind is that within your unit template, you're only ever gonna have one standards field. The other field type that you'll be able to use to create the rest of your template is the multiple text boxes field. The multiple text boxes field is very flexible and will allow you to accommodate a variety of resources such as learning resources, assessments, or anything else in between that you wanna include in your unit. You'll first adjust the title up here and then you'll be able to click within to add a pre-structured template, which can vary from an empty canvas as we're looking at here, or a fully structured layout. Shortly, we'll take a look at some different examples so you can really see the different ways that these can be used. For each multiple text box field, you also have a field description similar to the standards field, where you can add more context for curriculum creators to better understand how they can use this field. If you want to add another one, simply add the plus field button here, and you'll see another multiple text box field appear. You can also see this in our list on the left. For each field, you can also use the duplicate option on the right, the arrows to move it up or down, or the garbage can icon if you'd like to delete one. The last thing we'll look at before we jump to an example is how you can publish your templates. You'll see this option in the top right corner of your template here. Once you've finished updating this template and are ready to start working with it by creating curriculum maps, go ahead and publish it using the publish option here. If you ever need to come back and make changes to this template, simply click the create draft option in the top right here. Again, any changes you make will not impact existing maps, but will allow you to use this template moving forward and if you ever do want to update existing maps, please just let us know which ones you'd like to update with this new template by reaching out to us at support at chalk.com. Now that we have a better understanding of how to use the unit template editor within Chalk, we'll go through a specific example, making sure to leverage the best practices that we talked about earlier. In this example, we can see that our unit template currently has five fields from our unit outline on the left. Below, we can see each of the fields, where the first is our standards field, and the remaining four fields are all multiple text box fields 
that have been customized to meet our needs. If we start from our standards field, we can see that we've labeled it standards, we have not enabled learning targets, and below in the field description, we have a walkthrough of how you can add standard sets to your curriculum map, as well as a link to some help articles to guide you through that process. Keep in mind that if we click in here, we can use the rich text editor to customize the content in here. If, for example, we want to add any school specific resources. If we keep going, we'll take a look now at our desired results field. This is the first multiple text box field we have in our template. We can see we've customized the title to desired results. And within the template area, we can see we've again used the rich text editor to include three tables, which include transfer, meaning, and acquisition. Below this, if we look at the field description, we can see we've laid out what the expected usage is for our desired results field. We've also included a screenshot here so you can see a real example. If we keep going to our assessment evidence, we can see again we've customized a multiple text box field, where the title in this one is assessment evidence. The content within it allows the curriculum creator to add a title for their assessment, as well as three different ways to classify their assessment, and then finally a description. If we scroll down below, we can see more details about the expected usage of this field. For example, we can better define what the assessment tiers represent and how we can use the codes that are in the template to make finding content in the future much easier. If we keep scrolling down, we can see a completed assessment as a screenshot for an example for curriculum writers to refer to. If we take a look at the last two fields, we have learning opportunities, which has been left blank, as well as our resources field, which again has been left blank. The goal here is to provide a flexible canvas for curriculum creators to work within. Once we've settled on our template here, we'll want to make sure that we click publish in the top right to finalize any changes before we're able to start making maps with this template. We'll now use the navigation in the top left here to go back and select curriculum maps here to start creating maps. In this example, we'll go ahead and jump right into an existing map that's using the template we were just looking at. In this case, we're looking at an 11th grade English course. If we select the first unit here, we can see we have our standards field with the pre-populated standards that have been added using the plus standards button at the bottom here. Within each, we can simply scroll through and search for any individual standards, either by code or description, and add them using the add button like this. If you want to access the field description or help text from any field, you'll want to select the help icon that appears to the right where we can see that field description that we've created. Each of these links will link to the help articles we've laid out and will provide more context for the curriculum creator. If we keep scrolling down, we can take a look now at our desired results field. Again, if we click the help text, we can see that description here on the right. And as a curriculum creator, I can go ahead and jump in and start creating content here. In this example, we're seeing populated essential questions, understandings, knowledge and skills that have all been color coded to match each other. If we keep scrolling down, we can take a look at our assessment evidence field where we can see populated assessments that include a title, all the different ways to classify the assessments have been filled in, a brief description provided. We've also been able to directly associate standards to these assessments. If we scroll down to the bottom and wanted to add a new assessment, we can see how it's using the template that we've created earlier. Continuing on, if we look at learning opportunities, you may recall these were left as empty canvases, so you could do things like include links or embed videos directly within them. Finally, resources is structured the same way where you can add any resources you need to by typing them in here or attaching them from your computer. The last thing we'll take a look at here is the standards analysis tab, which is heavily influenced by the fields you select in your unit template. To access the standards analysis tab, select standards at the top of the map here. 
And you may notice on the left-hand side, we have all the unit fields that are part of our template. And these map directly to the columns that are showing in our analysis tab. For example, if we want to compare all the standards that have been added to a unit and confirm each of them has an assessment, we can narrow down our analysis tab to focus only on those fields and quickly access ones that may or may not have an assessment to add it here. There are many different ways you can use the standards tab to analyze your curriculum. Making sure you explore this as you're working through updating and creating your unit template can be really helpful to make sure you can take full advantage of what Chalk has to offer. This brings us to the conclusion of our tutorial. We thank you for taking the time to watch this and hope you found this information helpful. If you're looking for additional support, here are some of the different channels that you can access. Starting with our on-demand video tutorials, these can be found in your main navigation menu within Chalk or by just going to tutorials.chalk.com. You can also go directly to our support page from support.chalk.com, or this can be found within your app in the help icon in the top right corner. As always, if you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out to us directly using the live chat in the bottom right corner, or if you email us at support at chalk.com, we'll get back to you within 24 hours to answer any of your questions. Thank you again for checking out the Chalk tutorial on creating unit templates for your institution.